Okay, this is Dan. I am creating this video for you guys to hopefully help people decide on the best rod for them for tuna popping. Um, it's about to uh, open up for North Carolina and already some guys are probably heading down there on exploratory missions. Uh, but that fishery is going to bust wide open really soon. At the same time, um, it's just uh, getting started in Panama as well. So I know a lot of you guys have trips on the books and, uh, you know, want to get the best rods and tackle for that fishery. So I wanted to make this video today, not only to tell you about the rods that I offer, but also to give you some advice in general uh, for the fishery and for these type of rods. Um, very often they come in with, uh, you know, not a lot of documentation and, and, and when so it's in, uh, you know, another language that you guys can't read. So, uh, most of you can't read, myself included. So, um, again, the point of the video is twofold. Uh, A, to give you some advice about this fishery, um, how to take care of your gear, and uh, at the same time, of course, to tell you about what I offer and why I'm promoting the brands that we are promoting. So without further ado, this is a popping rod. This is a long one. This is an eight foot five. I probably should have chosen something a little bit lighter. But uh, as you guys know, the, these are two piece rods. They have to be for travel. There's no way you're getting an eight foot five rod on the airplane. So they are two piece rods and the technology to join them together is called a butt joint. Okay, it's called a butt joint. And a lot of people, you know, kind of scratch their heads and they wonder, you know, can that be strong enough to land a tuna? Um, the best analogy I can give you is if you had a, a two by four and uh, you cut it in half at an angle, uh, not that way, but you cut it that way, and you put some wood glue on it, you put it on a vise, you let it dry overnight, you try to break that piece of wood. It's not gonna break where the glue joint is. The glue is stronger than the wood. It's gonna break somewhere else. This is kind of the same concept. Um, this particular rod that I have in my hand is a, um, a Big Tuna 85F, and this is made by Ripple Fisher in Japan. So I wanted to use this rod as an example and also tell you some things that are unique to the Ripple Fisher and Yamaga rods. So when you take the rod apart, okay, um, you can see that the ferrule uh, is about, uh, this one's almost four inches long. One of the biggest mistakes guys make is trying to bury the entire ferrule into the handle of the rod. Now, regardless of what brand of rod you have or where you got it, okay, there is no need to try to um, mate this so it's 100% inserted. And I'll tell you the reason for that. This is a carbon on carbon connection. And over the years, it's designed for it to wear. So year one, let's say, you know, there's this much showing. After you put it in a couple of times and turn it to get it snug, a little bit of the carbon fiber will wear away. So each subsequent year, it's gonna go a little bit deeper and it's a little bit deeper, okay? Uh, there's a lot of confusion on this, okay? A lot. So do not make the mistake of thinking that you have to bury the entire tip section into the handle section. Because A, it's gonna be really hard to get it apart, and B, you run the risk of having a, what we call a burst break, okay? And a burst break happens when this is over inserted and it is putting force from the inside of the tube, okay? There's too much force, and then when you put some load on it, there's way too much force, and you'll actually get a burst break uh, here, not, not at the tip, the, the actual handle will burst, okay? So um, a couple of do's and don'ts. Um, do let the rod come up to temperature wherever you happen to be before you try to put the rod together, okay? Often, you know, you're gonna fly somewhere, the rods are in the belly of the plane, the whole rod tube gets really cold, you get to your destination, you're excited, you wanna build your gear right away, take, take the rods out of the rod tube, let them come up to room temperature for at least an hour before you put the rod together, okay? That's number one. <clears throat> number two, never, ever, ever tap the rod, okay? 
Do not tap the rod on the ground or on the deck of the boat <coughs> to try to get the tip to bury itself more into the handle. Okay, another big no-no. Um, again, the result could be that you can't get the rod apart or the worst case, you get a burst break. One thing that I did find in Japan, which, which I highly recommend, is this uh, gripper. Okay, I don't know if you guys can, how well you can see that. Okay, this is a really inexpensive item that's available in tackle shops in Japan for the specific purpose of putting the rods together. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to show you guys how it works. Uh, three come in a package, and they're all different colors. So basically what you do is you, you put this on the, hand, on, on the tip section, okay? And if you notice, it, it actually slides. But when you grip it, it provides a really nice firm grip. And you can very easily, of course I had to pick an eight foot five rod, you can very easily get the rod apart. And you can get it very snug this way, okay? And what's great about this is you get that snugness, but you're not tempted to touch the eye. I know a lot of you, myself included, you know, you naturally want to go to that guy and put a little pressure. Don't do that, okay? That will hurt the guide, you can bend the guide, you can crack the uh, epoxy where the foot of the guide is cemented to the rod, so never do that. I see a lot of you struggling with those things that open mayonnaise jars and tacky towels and all kinds of stuff. Uh, th th these things are great, and they're only about $5. They're available on our website. So you can really get, the, get that crunch. Okay, so again, just a quick recap. There is no need to bury the entire tip into the handle. It is designed to have extra travel, so over the years, for you guys that are, that are tuning in late, over the years, putting this together, uh, the, the carbon fiber on carbon fiber, there's gonna be a little bit of wear, and a little bit of carbon fiber dust is gonna come out, come out of there over the years. So it, this is by design that the epoxy and the quote unquote finished tip doesn't go all the way there. Okay, now, something I wanna, also tell you that you're going to find um, with Ripple Fisher, Yamaga, MC Works, your, your, your high quality, your, your fine quality Japanese rods, okay? When you look at the, 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 the ferrule, the connection from the tip, okay, it is in no way sanded, okay? It is perfectly round. It is the way that it was rolled, okay? Other rod manufacturers, and pretty much almost all of the Chinese manufacturers, cannot achieve this level of precision. So what happens is um, a worker will literally take this tip section and file it down to get it to mate to the handle. Okay, they all do this. Uh, big, small, all of them over there. So what happens is now you have something that was a perfectly round tube and you've taken a file to it, now there's a flat spot. Maybe obviously a microscopic flat spot, but nevertheless, it's flat. When you put the rod together and you twist it a little bit, now it can lock. And I've had all types of customers having real, real trouble getting rods apart, and uh, it's a frustrating thing to happen, but this is basically why it happens. It happens because the rod tip is filed to get it to mate to the handle, okay? And that's how they achieve that. Um, evidence being um, Yamaga, Ripple Fisher, MC Works are the only manufacturers out there that can and will sell you a replacement tip and or a replacement handle. Now, do they do this because they're nice guys? Maybe, but really, uh, in all seriousness, the reason they do this is because they can, okay? They can take a rod that you bought four years ago and you ruined the handle, uh, you had it in your garage, a, a mouse ate it, 
uh, it got boat rashed, whatever the deal is, you want a new handle. Four years later, you can actually order a handle and it's gonna match perfectly to the tip you have. And there's only three, maybe four manufacturers in Japan that achieve this level of precision. None of the Chinese manufacturers do it. I've had many, many customers over the years break a tip, break or lose a handle, and I've approached the manufacturers, and this is the reason that they've told me. And I've confirmed this later when I learned a lot more about popping rods over two trips to Japan. So one of the really neat things and, and one of the reasons I really love Yamaga and Ripple Fisher is you can order just the tip and you can order just the handle. Should it get broken or whatever happened to it, you know, just three winters ago I had a mount go to town on the cork on one of my G. Loomis rods. So, you know, it, it, it does happen. Um, the other thing you'll notice is when these rods go together, you'll actually hear, it's almost like a vapor, a vacuum. So you can hear that. That's because it's high precision. There's no air escaping around it. There's also no water getting down in there because it is a high precision connection. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, with rods is um, distance, okay? The last couple of years, what we've seen down in Panama as well as in New Jersey, all the guys that are going ghost hunting have observed just massive, massive feeds, okay? Crazy, crazy feeds where you're putting your popper or your swim bait right in the middle, okay? And you're positive, you know, you're positive. This is the cast. You're, you're going to get tight on, on a fish. And uh, lo and behold, the whole feed goes on and, and nothing, you know? Uh, it, it can be so, so frustrating both in Panama and uh, in, in New Jersey. And what guys are finding out is they really, really, really need to downsize the baits, okay? The poppers are often not working. The big traditional stick baits are not working either. And what guys are finding is 12 centimeter, which is three and a half inches, and below is what's getting bit. So I wanna talk to you about a couple of those lures. Uh, this is one that we're bringing in from Japan right now. It's uh, made by Shimano, and it's called the Manma Sardine, okay? It's very small. It's, it's 12 centimeters, so it's, it's this big, okay? But it's made out of tungsten, okay? Tungsten is super dense, 40% denser than lead. So even this little tiny lure weighs two ounces, and you can really cast this thing. I mean, it casts like a bullet. It's got very little wind resistance. The other lures that I really recommend, um, I don't have one in front of me, but I, I certainly recommend uh, the Siren Deep Seductress 125 millimeter. That's been a go-to for the last three, four years. Uh, a solid, solid producer in Panama, uh, as well as up in uh, New Jersey and New York. Uh, another lure that you guys should consider is the Sea Falcon uh, Sinking Tuna Lure. It's a little bit bigger, it's 140 centimeters. So you can see it's a little bit bigger, but this does draw the bite as well. Uh, this particular model is 80 grams. So that's uh, a little bit more than three ounces and probably by the time you put hooks on it, it's, it's well over three ounces. So you can really cast these guys really far. One of the ways to be able to be effective and cast these is to get a longer popping rod. Uh, a lot of my customers already have an eight foot or a seven foot six, and they find that they just can't get the distance and or it's too much effort to get the distance. So one of the things, uh, kind of like an insider tip, is to get a, a longer rod that has that kind of tip that will really impart some energy to your lure and get it out there. You'll find that the longer the rod, the more accurate you can be with less effort. And that's, that's true regardless of whose rod you buy. But in specific, specifically, I wanted to talk to you guys about the Big Tuna 85 and the 85F, okay? Let's talk about the 85F first. It's eight foot, five inches. It's a two-piece popping rod. It's rated for PE8. It can handle about 22, 24 pounds of drag at 45 degrees. So it's got a lot of balls to it. 
but it's specifically designed to throw lures as small as 18 grams. That's three quarters of an ounce. Uh, there are probably not a lot of tuna lures on the market that are that size, but guys are having luck with one ounce and ounce and a half Ava jigs where they put an assist hook off the front of it. Uh, they attach, uh, they tie to a swivel, uh, split ring to the uh, jig, and then slip in a seven aught or eight aught uh, tuna grade hook on a piece of Kevlar. Has been super, super effective. But to get that distance and to get that accuracy and not kill yourself, you really want a longer rod. So one that has really been uh, really, really popular lately is the Big Tuna 85F. And again, that's rated for lures as small as 18 grams and as big as 120 grams, which is four ounces. Gives you a lot of range. It's a true PE8 rod. A lot of guys wind up fishing at PE6 to get even more distance. So the ideal combo there would be a Stella 14,000 XG, okay, with 65 pound line and probably no more than 80 or 100 pound leader. And you're gonna get crazy, crazy distance. Hey Chris, I see you watching, what's up buddy? Um, the next rod in the lineup is the Big Tuna 85. And that rod is, is just like the 85F, but it's not quite a, as whippy a tip. That's designed for 28 gram to 130 gram lures. It's also eight foot five, they sell for the same amount of money. Uh, and that rod just has a little bit more balls to it if you don't think you need to go as light as the 85F. Going downwards in their line, also super, super popular, kind of a crossover rod would be the Big Tuna 710. Uh, seven foot, 10 inches, PE8 rod. That is something that you could comfortably go bluefin fishing with or yellowfin fishing with. Uh, the bluefin that you guys are targeting uh, do tend to be bigger, especially if you're going to North Carolina. You're going to run into some bigger fish. The fish can get below the thermocline. You have to pull them up through the thermocline. You have a lot of current. So most guys that want to go down to North Carolina or up to Cape Cod are thinking about the Big Tuna uh, 710, the Big Tuna 7.6, and if you really want to go hardcore, the Big Tuna 7.3, which is an absolute beast, uh, really for Cape Cod and North, and North Carolina. You don't, you don't need a rod like that for Panama. It's, uh, it's just a little bit too short. So those are um, the higher end of the Ripple Fisher Yamaga line. If you are looking for something that's a little bit more entry level, you don't want to spend you know, high 600s, low 700s for a popping rod, uh, it's just not in the budget this year or whatever. But we do have Yamaga. And Yamaga is made in the very same factory as Ripple Fisher. Um, it's a super popular rod. Um, the series that I'll talk to you guys about is called Blue Sniper. And Blue Sniper has, I think, 10 or 11 models. Uh, about three or four are ap applicable to uh, tuna fishermen. So they have ones called the Blackie. Uh, all three of the blackies are designed for tuna fishing, and they're all 8 foot 10. So there's an 8 foot 10 6, there's an 8 foot 10 8, and there's a 8 foot uh, 8 1 10 uh, with a metal gimbal that we ordered specially for Panama and Cape Cod, where you know it's going to be a longer, you know, prolonged fight. You want the, the gimbal pin to, to help you, and you know, etc. These rods really don't twist in your hands the way traditional rods do. Not only are they made out of carbon fiber, but the carbon fiber is woven in a quad design. So it's like one piece, one piece, one piece, one piece. So it's actually going in four different directions. Uh, the other thing, and I, I, I really won't speak to it too much because it's kind of a trade secret, but let's just say that the Yamaga and Ripple Fisher rods are not 100% carbon fiber, okay? When you see these rods bend, and you look at some of the videos, and, and you see the abuse these rods are taking, uh, they're not 100% carbon fiber rods. I can tell you that there is a bit of fiberglass in these rods, just enough to make it tough. And you'll see when these rods elongate, and some of the abuse, uh, I call it a candy cane. You can literally candy cane these rods, okay? They can, the tip will bend to 270 degrees I wouldn't really suggest it as a matter of course, but I have on film some beginners 
making beginner mistakes, not getting the rod out of the belt, not plunging the tip in the water, and letting the tuna go under the boat, and the, the tip's literally gone like a candy cane uh, with, without any breaks or, or ill effects. The rod went on to catch fish for three more days. But um, just so you know, uh, there is kind of a secret mix. Uh, the rods are primarily carbon fiber, thus they're tough, they're light. If you compare them to our competitors that are made in China or made in Korea, the rods are probably three ounces lighter model to model on the tuna rods, which, which makes a huge difference when you're, when you're throwing lures all day. Um, the, these rods are high precision and uh, you guys will, will really like them. Even the Blackie series, which are $499 to $540, are 100% made in Japan. It's not Japan by innuendo or Japan sitting next to a wall of hoppers from Japan. Uh, the Yamaga and Ripplefish are 100% handmade in Japan. And as the authorized distributor for the continental US, we sell with the full faith and confidence of the factory. You're not buying a gray marketed rod without a warranty. You get a warranty card from us. There's a two year warranty. Plus you can buy parts for life. So if you buy the rod from us and a tip breaks or a handle breaks or you lose the handle or something like that, you can come back to us and, and order parts in the future. So just wanted to let you guys know that. All these items um, can be found on our website, um, the rod tightening grip. Um, the Shimano Manma Sardines, the Sea Falcon uh, sinking pencil. Uh, there's actually two. There's a diving pencil and there's a sinking pencil. The sinking pencil uh, seems to be selling a lot better. It's 80 grams. The diving pencil is 60 grams. Uh, they're both really sexy looking lures. I mean, they're, they're really great. They have great colors, um, of incredible detail. Um, so it, it's really up to you. In terms of the rods, uh, supply is getting really tight. We do have a shipment that is leaving Japan on Monday. I estimate it's going to take at least a week, if not 10 days, to get here. And then we'll be fully restocked on the Yamaga Blackie, on the Yamaga uh, Blackie series. We have, we have a bunch of the 8110s coming in with metal gimbals and a nice Fuji cap, a, a Fuji gimbal, Fuji cap uh, for Panama and for bigger fish up in the Cape. We have lighter rods like the 81.6 coming in. We also have a bunch of Stellas, uh, 8,000s and 14,000s that are coming in. We have extra spools in stock if you guys need those. So um, really, you know, we're trying to be the, the best source we can for tuna popping as well as jigging and specifically, of course, slow pitch jigging. I wanted to keep the video as, as short as I could, and I, I see I'm kind of rambling on a little bit. It looks like we're, wow, 23 minutes. There goes my goal of 10. But I, I really do appreciate you checking us out. Um, I'm recording this um, on OBS as well as doing the Facebook Live. So I'll take the file from OBS and clean it up a little bit and publish that to our YouTube channel uh, in the next day or so, so guys can, can take a look that missed out on the broadcast. So. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support. I look forward to a really good tuna season this year, both in Panama, uh, down in North Carolina, and up in the Cape. I think everyone agrees that this is going to be a, just an outstanding season. So make sure you get what you need. And if you have any questions or concerns or comments, uh, definitely hit me up in Messenger, or you can uh, you know email me or ping me uh, via our uh, website, www.tacklenow.com. And if you put a slash and type in Yamaga, you'll go directly to the Yamaga section. Thanks again. I really appreciate your time, everybody. Have a great weekend.